Okay, folks. Uh, good morning. Do we have any questions? Okay. So what's happening today is we are going to have a quiz, quiz number six, towards the end of the class at around uh, like 10.30 or so. And I also have your previous quiz, which was quiz number, uh, number five, I believe. Graded, it's here. So after the class is over, we can actually, you guys can have it. Uh, so what we did last time was we wrapped up that old chapter of the inverters which was chapter 8, and then we uh, started the discussion on a new chapter, uh, which is chapter 9, I believe, Resonant Converters. As we discussed last time, the concept behind Resonant Converters is that every time that we turn a switch on or off, and by the way, when I say switch, I'm also talking about diodes as well, because diodes are like passive switches. Um, as it turns out, for instance, if you have a, like a, a buck topology like what we have over here and you are trying to turn the switch off over here. Turning the switch off means the voltage that was almost zero before has to go and settle up to a particular value, in this case Vn, and also the current which was non-zero has to jump down to zero. So as it turns out this transition is not immediate there is going to be a little bit of an overlap between the rising voltage and the falling current. And once you multiply the voltage and current, because they are not zero both, uh, that gives you some losses, some power losses in the switch, which is called the switching losses. So every time you turn the switch on and off, you lose a little bit of power, basically. And the whole concept of soft switching is to either eliminate or minimize these losses. So the idea is, for instance, if I have a switch, instead of the voltage jumping up, I would like to manipulate the converter in a way that the voltage does not instantly jump, it gradually goes up. Or, so this is like a ZVS kind of an approach. Or if I have a current, and the current of the switch is jumping down, I'm trying to manipulate the system in a way that the current actually gradually comes down. So basically when it is reaching zero, uh, there's not a lot of overlap between the voltage and current, and therefore the switching losses is either eliminated or minimized. In order to achieve this goal, basically what we do is we add a bunch of resonating components to our classic topologies. For instance, here, if you have a classic Bach converter, Right, something like this. What you do is, one of the approaches is to add an inductor over here, and now all of a sudden we have two inductors in the system. The original one was the main inductor in the system, and this one, in order to not get them confused, we call it L sub R. R stands for resonance. And also, you add a capacitor in parallel with your diode. And now all of a sudden you have two caps in the system. You call this car, uh, this guy CR, C of resonance, and this was the main cap in the system. As it turns out, this resonating inductor and the resonating caps, the, the cap that we add, they are actually kind of a small components. And their time transients are much faster. And uh, sometimes, for instance, CR may not be an external cap. It actually could be the parasitic cap of the diode itself. So basically, sometimes you look at the topology, you can't really identify a CR, but the parasitic cap of the diode is behaving for you as CR. Or LR could or could not be an external component because in the end we have one turn of kind of winding over here, therefore there is a little bit of impedance in this loop, and that actually could be your LR or could be absorbed in your LR. So this is, this, this is the kind of approaches that we are trying to do. There are many, many, many ways of doing this. Each topology has its own hundreds of papers associated. For instance, this particular one was the Bach topology. And this particular appro approach, 
gives you a actually a, I think a zero current switching a kind of a kind of a thing. Then if you want to apply zero voltage switching for the bug, there's going to be another basically way of adding the components. So what we do in this chapter is we are going to actually review a few of them that are either the most important ones, which I honestly don't believe so, or the ones that are actually trying to make you familiar with this whole concept. Now before doing so, because we are adding a resonating inductor and a resonating cap in this, into the system, there's going to be some, as we are analyzing the system, there's going to be some resonance going on in the system. So before even getting to any topologies, what we did, we, what we started last time was looking at some basic resonating circuits. For instance, in this particular one, like case number one, we have a DC source and a resonating inductor and a resonating capacitor in, a, in you know, forming a loop. And the initial conditions are obviously important. So inductor current at the beginning of the formation of this loop is I a lot, and the cap voltage is VC naught. So these are the initial conditions. Going back to circuits one, you have a second order differential equation to solve. And if you do so, your response is going to be like this. Equation number one and number two. Number one describes the current of the inductor. Number two describes the voltage of the cap. And those are the ones that we care about. Uh, my notes are a little bit, you know, confusing over here. But remember, anything that I have, anywhere that I have crossed something out, it's just on the initial conditions. Like this is IL0, this is VDC minus VC naught and this is VDC again or VN whatever you use and this is again VDC minus VC naught all right and this is IL naught so if you look at this on average the inductor current waveform is zero on average the voltage of the cap is VDC and that makes sense this is in agreement with everything that we have covered so far in this class there are two new parameters appearing here one of them is omega naught which is the resonance frequency between this LR and CR uh, which is one over the square root of LR over uh, LR times CR and the other parameter is Z naught, which is called the characteristic impedance, which is the square root of LR over CR. Now, why did they call this omega naught and Z naught? Why did they not call it omega R and Z R? I just don't know. Anyway, so these are the two, two new parameters. Then there is a, another case that we may run into as we are analyzing a system, and that is a circuit like this, that not only we have this DC source of VDC, we also have a DC current source of IDC. So basically we have two DC sources in the system. At the time the system or network was formed, the initial condition for the inductor current was labeled to be IL0, and the initial condition for the capacitor voltage was VC0. Again, we have two energy storing components, LR and CR. They give us two differential equations which are here basically and once we solve these differential equations like a circuit one kind of a thing we get the answer which are equations number three and four so three describes what happens to the current of the inductor and four describes what happens to the voltage of the cap the resonating cap again the notes are uh, IDC plus this is IL naught minus I DC cosine of omega naught times T minus T naught. T naught is the time this, this circuit is formed. It's not always zero. And then we have VDC minus VC naught over Z naught times sine of omega T times T minus T naught. If you look, the average value of the inductor current is IDC, and that makes sense. On average, the cap is like an open circuit. So on average, this current has to flow through the inductor. So that's at least that part makes sense. When it comes to the cap, we have VDC. This is a minus sign over here. Uh, VDC times uh, VDC minus VC naught times the cosine for you know function pl plus Z naught times I L naught minus IDC times a sine function. 
And again, if you look, on average, the DC value of the cap is VDC. Again, makes sense. On average, there is no voltage drop across this inductor. So on average, these two voltages are supposed to be the same. Um, as it turns out, case one is a special case for case two. Actually, if you just have the equations for case two, it actually covers all three cases. So basically, case one is case two when you place IDC to be just zero. Just get rid of IDC, and that reduces down the circuit to case one. Then we have a third case, which is again a special case. And in this case, we have three elements in parallel, a DC current source, an inductor, a resonating inductor, and a resonating capacitor. And again, it's a, a special case of case two, and that is when your uh, DC source is actually zero. So any, any, uh, anywhere in these two equations, three and four, if you place VDC to be zero, you will actually have the, the third case. So again, the initial conditions are uh, Inductor current at t time uh, t equal to t naught when the circuit was formed is IL naught, and the cap voltage is VC naught, and then we have an IDC. We have two differential equations over here, and once you solve them, you get equations number answers number five and six. Number five is what's happening to the inductor current, the resonating current, and uh, the number six is what happens to the capacitor voltage. Again, the notes, this is IL0 minus IDC, and this is VC0 divided by Z0. And again, VC0 over here and IL0 over here. Again, if you look, on average, the, the value for the uh, inductor current is IDC. It makes sense. And on average, the voltage drop on the cap is zero. And that again makes sense because the, the current is periodic. All right, so let's say we have all these equations, all these three cases, and as I said, case number two is actually the most comprehensive one. Cases one and three are the special cases for case two. So you don't have to memorize any of these. Let's say you have all of these equations available to you, or once you run into a resonating circuit, you don't really have to go back to circuits one and try to find a solution for these uh, second order differential equations, you already just, you can just plug in the answers. So once we have all of these in mind, we are trying to look at our first uh, soft switching converter. This particular one is a buck converter, and the soft switching technique that is applied to it is zero current switching. So it's a ZCS resonance switch because the components, the resonating components are added around the switches and the diodes. And I don't know what happened here. And uh, that's our, actually our converter. As it turns out, there are two ways of doing this. One way is, so remember, we're focusing on just a buck converter. One way is, I don't know what is going on. Can you knock that door, see if there is anybody there? <coughs> is this going OK, or? Uh, yeah, there's nothing we can do about it. OK. To keep going. OK. OK, so we have this classic buck topology over here. So there are, there are two ways of achieving zero current switching. One of them is adding a resonant, a resonating, I guess the campus has some, some connectivity issues. Add, adding a resonating cap over here and adding a resonating inductor over here. So the resonating inductor is placed in series with your switch, and then in parallel with them, you add the resonating cap. 
Or another way of doing that is, again, adding a resonating inductor over here. And then place your resonating cap in parallel with the diode. As it turns out, this is a little bit better because it can actually absorb the parasitic uh, capacitance of the diode as well. So we are only focusing on this one. The analysis is almost the same. It doesn't matter, but and the results are almost basically the same. Now, in order to make our life easier, and now you can see you have a system. We have we two inductors and two capacitors. That means, uh, ideally, we have to analyze a, a fourth order system, but we make our life easier as something like what we did earlier when we were analyzing the buck converter, we just assumed the output cap was too large, therefore the voltage of the cap was almost DC, and then we instantly eliminated the, the dynamic of that cap. We reduced down to a first order system. We almost do the same thing, and that is, we, uh, we assume that the current of this inductor is almost constant now. And why is that? Because we are only focusing on this very small portion of time during which this, the switching is happening. So we are only focusing on this little, basically, action going on here. So it, it actually makes sense that, yes, I agree that the inductor current is actually ramping up, for instance. But if you just focus on that little period of time, you can argue that, OK, the inductor current is almost constant, and just get rid of it and make your life easier. So that's what we do. We just assume that the inductor current, the main inductor current, not the resonating one, the main inductor is large enough or sluggish enough so that we can assume its current is almost DC while we are only focusing on this switching transient. So this is almost constant. All right. So as you see, uh, what happens is we have a, basically your, the, the system that we are analyzing is a, a DC source, a switch, a resonating inductor, a resonating capacitor, a diode, and then a constant current source. Of I D C or I L, and this is V D C or V N. So this is basically the system that we are trying to analyze. We kind of got rid of the dynamics of the main inductor and the main cap to actually make it easier to analyze. All right. So uh, unlike the previous converters, like the buck converter operating under continuous conduction mode, we only have t had two modes. Switch was on, diode was off, diode was on, switch was off. Now we have four modes. As it turns out, uh, those two classic modes overlap with each other a little bit. So we have a time that, for instance, both the switch and the diode are on. So that's an actually like an extra mode. So uh, we are going to look at them. So first one is mode number one. During this mode, we have just turned the switch on. And uh, uh, in terms of by the way, uh, the label that the my notes has chosen for this inductor is I, I out, the output current, something like that. Uh, so in this mode, what's happening is uh, the inductor current is, a is still smaller than I out, which is the DC value of the output current. and. Uh, the voltage of the resonating cap is zero because the diode is still on. So technically, we have this cap over here. <coughs> but it doesn't matter if you consider it or not because the diode is on. Therefore, the cap is basically shorted. And the duration of this mode is from zero all the way down to T1. And T1 is the end of this mode, basically. So technically, we just turn the switch on. So switch is on, or shorted. We have the resonating inductor. 
and then we have diode also on so this is kind of a new mode during which both of the switch and the diode they are both on and on the output side we are just drawing this inductor relatively constant inductor current which is the output current as well so we just label it to be I O or I out something like that as you can see in this mode there is no resonance happening all we have is just this tiny little inductor the resonating inductor and we are applying V in across this inductor therefore the current of this inductor just rises so this there is no resonance going on so what we have is uh, let me draw the figure over here Okay, nothing. We have a resonating inductor. There is a constant voltage applied across the terminals of this inductor, which is Vn. Therefore, the current of this inductor rises. Now, how long does it rise? We have to look at the circuit and realize that, wait, first of all, this is ILR. Applying KVL over here, we know that the current of the diode plus the current of the resonating inductor is the current of the output. So as soon as the current of the resonating inductor reaches the output current, that means the diode tends to get reverse bias or the current of the diode gets to get ne tends to get negative. That's not going to happen. And that mode ends basically. I out. So beyond this mode, if I continue, the indication is this current is rising and rising and rising. This current is falling and falling and falling and gets negative. And obviously, this is the current of a diode. So the diode is going to turn off. That means we are moving on to a new mode. So if you just focus on the current of the, the diode, it's actually falling down. And T1 marks the point that the current of the diode reaches to zero. And the diode turns off, basically. So how long does this mode last? Uh, it's easy to look at it. We know we have this resonating inductor. There is a DC voltage applied to that. For any inductor, we know that the voltage of the inductor is proportional with the derivative of its current. And we know, well, obviously we don't know, but later on we are going to see that this is true. And that is the inductor at the beginning of the cycle had zero current because the switch was open. And we just closed the switch, therefore there was no current. So initial condition is zero. So you can easily find that the inductor current is just a straight line, a ramp. And uh, whenever this ramp reaches I0, that's the end of this mode. So you can easily find out that the duration of this mode is I0, which is the main inductor current, which is an indication of how much power is being consumed times LR, the value of the resonating inductor, divided by Vn. So this is an equation that we are going to use to basically calculate the duration of the first mode. Now, if you just focus on the diode over here, the current of the diode is not that important, so I have to erase it later. But anyway, it starts from I0 and comes down to zero. So now you can see that the diode is actually turning off at ZCS. So here the diode turned off, but the current of the diode did not have to jump from a positive value to zero. It was already very close to zero anyway. So we have ZVS, ZCS for the diode during the turn off of the diode. All right. So keep that in mind. All right. So that's as long as we are concerned about mode one, just this, magne this uh, uh, resonating inductor is getting energized. Therefore, the diode is getting pushed and pushed to providing less current. And ultimately, the diode is, is pushed to turn off at zero current conditions, which is good. And that's when the next mode starts. So now, 
in the second mode what happens is the diode is out of the picture now all right So the switch is still on. We have this resonating inductor. We had this diode that just before was on, but now it's off. So now we have to consider this cap because the cap is not shorted anymore. And the rest of the system. All right. So now we have a resonating system going on, resonating behavior going on, because both of LR and CR are in the picture. So in order to find the answers for this, we have to go back to those concept basic cases. And this is actually case number two. The, the source and the, the current source and the voltage source both are in the picture. All right. All we have to do is to identify the initial conditions at the beginning of this basically cycle. So let's look at that. This is ILR and obviously this is VCR. All right, initial values. T equal to T1 is the beginning of this cycle, basically, the beginning of this mode. At the beginning of this mode, if you look, the current of the resonating inductor had reached I out or I, I not. So this is I Z O. And for the resonating cap, the diode just turned off right before that the diode was on and the cap was shorted so this is this initial condition is basically zero so this is our initial conditions we have the circuit diagram we can look at uh, concept case number two which was this basically this circuit over here so we can use equations three and four to write down the answer that we want to basically obtain. So remember in this case, generally speaking, this was labeled to be IL0, and this was labeled to be VC0. So whenever we see IL0, we should replace it with I0, and whenever we see VC0, we should replace it with 0 in equations 3 and 4. So let me do that. Let me write the original equation and then at least do it for one of them. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, so... I'm just going to write equation 3 first. Equation th 3 tells me that it's a long equation. Cosine of All right, so this is equation three. All right, so equation three is like a general answer uh, response, and then we have to reduce it down to our particular case. For instance, this mode has started at T1, so wherever we see T naught, we should replace it with T1. Omega naught and Z naught are the same. Omega naught is 1 over the square root of LR times CR, and Z naught was the square root of LR over CR. So we, don't, we can't do anything about them. 
IDC is the DC value of the current, which is actually in this case I out. So over you see IDC, it's actually I out. IL0, we just found that that's the initial condition. In this particular case, it happens to be I out as well. So I have I out here as well. And VDC is actually our DC input source, VN. And VC0, we just looked at the initial conditions, and it is actually 0 in this particular case. So you can see that, first of all, this term is just 0. So you can actually cross the whole thing out. So it actually further simplifies your answer. And the final answer is, plus <coughs> so this is the response that we can obtain using equation number three using the special case that we are dealing with right now all right as you can see the resonating inductor has a current that has a DC component and in addition to that, we have a sine actually function added to that. All right. And actually, I have this, this equation over here as well in my notes, which is equation number eight. OK. So when it, uh, so when it comes to plotting these waveforms, uh, uh, we have to see what answer we have and then uh, uh, plot them for VCR. I'm not going to redo that again, but anyway, this is the for VCR. We start with equation number four, and uh, it actually cancels out a little bit. So this whole term is going to turn out to be zero. So basically, VCR reduces down to VN minus VN times cosine of. All right, so we have the two answers that we are looking for. One of them is a, is a sine function plus some DC bias. The other one is like 1 minus a cosine function, OK, or the reverse value of a cosine function. So I'm going to plot these two waveforms over here. All right, so what I have to do is erase this because I need this space. Or maybe I can, I don't know, is it possible to move it? I don't think so. Uh, let me see if we have a space up here. No, we don't. So I have to erase this. OK. So as long as the first mode was concerned, this cab was shorted because the diet was on, OK? So this was the first mode. Now we are trying to draw the second mode. And I'm going to cheat a little bit using the sign thing that I have from before. Ah, it didn't work. Okay. So ILR is trying to follow a sine function, and the sine function starts at t equals to t1, and there is a DC bias to that, and that DC bias is I out. So actually, I'm referring to this equation over here. Okay. So I have this DC bias over here plus a sine function that is 0 at time equal to t1. So it's, it's trying to follow this pattern over here. All right, let me just see if I can find, move it a little bit up. I think this is good enough, so I'm just going to draw this. <coughs> oh. 
Okay. Now, obviously, this function does not last forever. Before something else happens, we are actually moving to a new mode, and that is actually when this uh, basically inductor, resonating inductor current, tends to get negative, and we are going to see how. And that's actually the end of this mode. I'm assuming that my switch does not support negative current. So as soon as the current of ILR, which is the current of the switch, remember these two currents are the same. The current of the resonating inductor and the current of the switch are the same. As soon as this current tends to get negative, that's the end of this mode, basically. All right, so this is how this one looks like. And when it comes to the 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 inductor the capacitor voltage we are trying to follow a let's see if i can move it just a little bit we are trying to follow a cosine function so basically we are looking at this one <coughs> Vn minus Vn times cosine, so it's like 1 minus a cosine thing, and it is actually going to look like this. All right. And obviously, because, the, what's ha because of what's happening to the resonating inductor current, this mode ends, and therefore this cosine function does not continue anymore. So I can actually get rid of this now. So these are going to be our actually waveforms, as close as I could get to reality. OK, uh, so this is it. So what happens at the end of this mode is uh, the current of the resonating inductor tends to get negative. And before getting negative, it reaches zero. So this is actually a good time to turn my switch off because I was trying to achieve zero current switching. And now you can see that the current of the switch has returned to zero. So if I turn the switch off at this time, I have actually achieved zero current switching for the switch at turn off. Zero current switching for the switch at turn off. So time equals to T2 is a good time to turn the switch off. So if you're monitoring this current, let's say we are measuring it, as soon as it gets very close to zero, we can command the switch to turn off. And therefore, you have ZCS for the switch. And uh, the bad thing over here is you cannot really independently turn the switch off whenever you want. You have to wait for the system, for the resonance to be over uh, or doing its job. And whenever the current reaches zero, you can have to switch, turn the switch off. So we don't really have control over the turn off time of the switch. T2 is determined by the dynamics in the system. So this is actually a disadvantage, because in a buck converted, in a classic buck, you can turn the switch off whenever you want. I mean, adjusting your duty cycle, you can turn the switch whenever you, wa you want. Now we have to basically w wait for the dynamic in the system. All right, that's the beginning of the third mode. So all I have to do now is look at the initial conditions for the third mode, which is the final conditions in the second mode. So uh, if I uh, look, you can see that. OK? So T2 is defined the time during which or at which the resonating inductor has returned back to 0. So comparing these two equations, I actually can find a, a, an expression for T2. So all I'm doing here is I'm saying that 0 equals I out plus All right. All parameters in this expression are known. For instance, I out is known. Hopefully, VDC is known, which is Vn. 
and all that is missing on instead of VDC, we I better write V in. And T1 also is known. T1 is the duration of the first mode. So the only thing that is unknown is T2. So I can easily solve this for that and say, OK, T2 minus T1, which is the duration of the second mode, equals Uh, all right. A lot of times in a quiz, a students make mistake when they are using their calculator. Uh, the right answer for T2 minus T1 is something like that. If you just solve the, the above equation, you may actually get a negative angle, which is actually giving you another answer. And that answer is when this guy is actually returning to 0. So it gives you something negative. So please pay attention. T2 minus T1 should be more than 180 degrees because from here to here we are looking at half a cycle so from here to here is like 180 degrees or pi radians so when you're looking at the duration of the second mode punching in the numbers make sure the number that you get is more than 180 degrees or more than pi radians otherwise that answer is not right because again, you can actually find lots of other answers. You can find an answer here, find another answer here, an answer here, all of these answers. And they are not the right answers. OK? So that, that's something to remember. And this equation over here definitely gives you the right answer. There is an equa equation in the note that I encourage you guys not to use it. And that is this equation over here. Just use this one. All right? All right, so this is the duration of the second mode. So now we have T2. We can look at the voltage uh, waveform of the cap and actually evaluate how much is this voltage, basically. We are trying to see how much this voltage is because this is the initial conditions for the next mode. So now uh, all I have to do is for the expression that I have for VCR instead of T, I should just place T2, and T2 is actually explained over here. T2 minus T1 is at least explained here. So um, let me label this equation to be equation number 10. All right. And earlier I had an expression for VCR. So if I just combine 9 and 10, Yes, let me see, I have it somewhere. Okay, Vn. Actually, I'm only using 9. I haven't really plugged in 10 over here because when you're doing the, the math is you find a numerical value for T2 or T2 minus T1 and then use equation number 9 uh, to find that. So I would just, just say 9 is giving me this. So this uh, T2 minus T1 that you need comes from equation number 10 over here. All right. So there you have it. At the end of this mode, I know that the current of the resonating inductor is back to zero, and that's when I have to turn the switch, or I better turn the switch off. And I know how much voltage I have across my resonating cap. And uh, now I turn the switch off. So mode three starts. All right. 
Now mode 3 starts, meaning that I just turned the switch off because it was a good time, because the current of the switch was zero. And uh, the diode is off to begin with because it's reverse biased, because the voltage of the cap is positive. Whenever the voltage of the cap is pot, the resonating cap is positive, the diode is reverse biased. So now, okay, mo okay, so switch. So now mode 3 starts. Switch is off because we just turned it off. Diode is off because VCR is positive. That means the diode is reverse bias. Okay. So now the system is like this. I have a switch that is open, and that means it's actually taking out my resonating inductor from the picture, and then I have this resonating cap, and then we have this diode that is off, and then we have this I out. So as you can see here, we don't really have a resonance going on anymore because the resonating inductor is out of the picture. So technically what's happening is this cap was charged to a certain value using equation over here. We can find that. And then now this cap is actually being discharged. And we have a cap. It is being discharged by a constant DC source or a relatively constant DC source. Therefore, the voltage of the cap is going to come down linearly. All right. So now the voltage of the cap is going to come down. And the switch is off. All right, something like that. All right. So how long does this mode last? as long as the voltage of the cap returns back to zero because the voltage of the cap cannot get negative because there's a diode over there and the diode is going to turn off before that even happens so uh, so if you look VCR starts from some initial condition and that initial condition is this much This is the initial value of the voltage of the cap, and then goes down with a negative slope, and that the slope is this one. All right. And this is labeled to be equation number 12. All right, so we just have a ramping down kind of a voltage for the cap. How long does this last? Um, this lasts when, when VCR turns to get negative, and it is not allowed to get negative because there is a diode there, and the diode is going to turn on. So uh, let's say VCR at T equals to T3 gets 0, and that would be All right, so this is an expression we can use to calculate T3 or T3 minus T2, which is the duration of this mode. So T3 minus T2 would, would be
And this is equation number 13. All right. So now also we can measure the duration of this mode, which is T3 minus T2. All right. So now we have, at the end of this mode, basically what happens is diode turns on at the end of this mode. Okay, at T3, basically the diode turns on. So what happens in this mode, uh, if what happens in the next mode, which would be mode number four, okay. In this mode, the switch is off because we turned, off, turned it off at the beginning of the, even the previous mode, which was mode number three, and we just had the diode turning on Okay, so, and that's pretty much the last mode. It runs from T3 all the way to the end of the period, which is capital T. So now your circuit diagram looks like this. A switch that is open. So the resonating inductor is out of the picture, and the resonating cab is also out of the picture because the diode is on. So all that is happening in this mode is the diode is actually acting like a freewheeling kind of a mechanism and that we had that in the classic buck converter as well. When you turn the switch open, the diode is on and it, the inductor current flows through the, the diode. And that's it. That's the end of this mode. And uh, it's important to know that what happens when the period ends. Again, when the period ends, you turn the switch on so at the end of this period you have the switch over here that you close it and then you jump back to mode number one we just close the switch mode number one we just close the switch the initial value of the in resonating inductor coin is zero because it was open right before that and the diode is still on. So we actually, at the end of this mode, when you open up the switch, you jump back to mode number one, basically. All right, so uh, to, to finish our waveforms, technically nothing is happening in this mode. The resonating inductor is out of the picture, therefore its current is zero. The resonating capacitor is also out of the picture. And therefore, its voltage is basically zero. So now you can see that our overall goal was to achieve zero current switching. And let's see if we did that or not. If you focus on ILR, which is the same as I switch, well, obviously, these two components are placed in series with each other, so they share, they share the same current. At turn on, we had ZVS because as soon as we turned the switch on, the current of the switch did not jump to a particular value. It gradually ramped up. So we have ZCS here for the switch. At turn on. And earlier we also discussed that we also have ZCS for the switch at turn off. So good job here, good job here. Not only we achieved ZCS for the switch, if you look at the diode, the voltage of VCR is actually the opposite of the voltage of the diode. You can see here the diode turned off and the voltage of the diode did not instantly jump to a value, it gradually rose. So we have actually ZVS for the diode at turn off. And again, when the diode was about to turn on, its voltage was actually coming back to zero. So again, here we have zero voltage switching for the diode at turn on. 
So we have ZCS and ZVS going on at the same time. Why do we call it a ZCS topology? Because our, the switch is our main priority and because the switch is enjoying a zero con switching mechanism, we call it a ZCS topology. All right, I'm gonna stop here, then we are gonna get to our quiz. Uh, we are gonna actually continue this a little bit more, find a bunch of other equations, for instance, the voltage transfer ratio of this topology. And then once we are done with this, we are gonna move on to another topology next time. All right, so let's start with the quiz. Uh,